Hi friends. I have been not really showing up here lately <laughs> on uh, Instagram, but I've been showing up anyway. Like I've been living my life. We just, we got busy. Um, I had like my big weekend in Phoenix at the end of August, uh, where I met with Ali Casaza and we did some business planning. And then I went to powerhouse women event the next day and I met with a lot of amazing women, got to chat a little bit with Lindsay Schwartz and Kasia Getmary. Um, Kasia, not Kasia, that was weird. Um, <laughs> uh, but anyways, it was so much fun. I, you know, wrote that out. I talked on here a little bit about how exciting those things were, recorded some podcast episodes coming right out of that. It was super exciting. Um, and then I had one week to <laughs> prepare to send my oldest kid to school for the first time ever. Um, I have a kindergartner. And then we had the first week of school. Very exciting. So much going on. Having to wake up and get all the kids up and ready for bed because we usually all sleep in. And it was just new. Getting used to something new and then trying to like have energy to show up with the business side of stuff. Running the podcast and the Instagram page and the Etsy shop and all those things. Like so many ideas were coming in. I've been doing a lot but it's all been behind the scenes kind of stuff. I haven't felt like showing up on video um, it's, <laughs> so yeah, I just haven't been showing up that much. And then we went camping and, um, I had this big plan to go live on uh, Saturday. I think it was maybe Sunday. I think it was Saturday. No, I should check. Uh, Saturday, Saturday, the 10th, um, September 10th was something along the lines of a uh, suicide prevention awareness day. Uh, like World Suicide Prevention Day, maybe something like that. Um, I don't know the exact terminology of what day it was, but the concept was suicide prevention and awareness. Um, and I wanted to go live for that chat, chat deep about that, talk about that, and it just it didn't feel right that day. I mean, I was camping, and I was like, it just. The campsite we were at was a very like public site. There was no like, let me just go for a walk on this trail and I'll be alone. And you know, we'll have this nice little setting and it'll feel good. There was just no no vibe for it there. It was very like, I'm just gonna go kind of hide in my camper for a little bit to recover from being in view of so many people for so long. Um, it was one of those like campsites where the neighbors are super close. It was basically like an RV campsite, I guess. Um, it was fun though. It was fun. I did enjoy it. It just wasn't what I imagined when I had made the plans to go live. So I didn't do it. Um, plus, who knows? It might have been super spotty. Um, I don't do well going live. I'll be honest. I don't like going live. Because once I see the little eye in the corner that tells me someone's watching, I get weird. Um, I don't know if anyone's ever noticed. Um, maybe it's just me that notices. I feel like I get really weird when I know someone's watching. It's really different when I'm recording it alone, knowing that people will watch it when it's done. I don't know. Um, I can just kind of focus better when I'm not distracted by the little number in the corner. My husband asks if I can just like cover the number, um, which maybe I could, I've just never tried. Maybe I get a little like circle sticker to put over where it shows up. Um, but anyways, I still want to have that chat with you that I planned on having now that we're all caught up on <laughs> where I've been and why I haven't been saying anything. I just kind of like dropped that bombshell reel and then like disappeared. And I'm sorry for that. Um, I've kind of just been sharing other people's stuff in my stories. Um, but I do want to talk about, it is still like suicide prevention month or suicide awareness month or prevention awareness. I don't know. Suicide month. Don't kill yourself month. That's what it is. So don't kill yourself month, September. Um, so I want to talk about that because we don't talk about it enough. We don't, it's a big deal. And this is something that was really coming through, um, with my big business weekend and with a lot of other content I've been taking in. Um, I've been listening to Patrice, Wa Patrice Washington <laughs> and she says, don't be a surface storyteller. And I have been telling you a surface story. I know I've mentioned it a couple times, my very significant pivotal day in the woods. Um, that's like a candy coat. 
this whole topic so often and don't deeply share what I've been through. When I tell you that I have the tools to help you have a happy mom brain, I'm not talking like the mom who's kind of burnt out, the mom who's a little bit tired, the mom who is running on coffee because she hasn't enough sleep. I'm talking to, I mean, absolutely these benefit you if that's you that's just burnt out and tired and you know, like your mindset's just kind of cruddy, you're just seeing the negative everywhere. I'm talking about the woman who's seen the negative everywhere for so long that she doesn't even know how to see the positive. I'm talking about the woman who just can't comprehend how other women are happy. I'm talking to the mom who doesn't even want to be a mom every day. I'm talking about the mom who doesn't want to get out of bed. I'm talking to the mom who honestly is struggling to hold on. My dog's licking herself. It's so distracting right now. I hope you can't hear that. Just cover your ears. Um, Bella, that's enough. Yucky. Okay, whatever. But I could not have happened in a more like serious moment. Um, because I can't stay serious for too long, right? <laughs> but I'm talking to the mom who is just getting pushed closer and closer to the edge. And I'm not talking about the edge where she yells at her kids. I'm talking about the edge where she leaves her kids. Because that's who I was. I was the mom that didn't want to be a mom. That day in the woods... It was deciding what to make for dinner that really kind of pushed me over the edge. I don't know. That part's a little bit of a blur now. I don't know if it's that I had finished making dinner and the stress was just so much I forgot that I'd made dinner or if I walked out instead of making dinner. I just know everything had been piled on top of me for so long that when my husband came in the front door, I went out the back door. I, I kissed everyone goodbye and I didn't know what was going to happen, but I knew I couldn't be there anymore. I knew I couldn't keep living the life I was living. I knew that something had to change. At the time I thought, well, remove me from the equation, that'll fix it. And I am so grateful for the walk I had in the woods and the clarity it brought because so many times I'd postponed making the decision about whether or not I was going to stick around. And then I would come out of my depressive episode and I would no longer feel suicidal tendencies anymore. I would be like, well, good thing I didn't go through with that because I feel fine now. I felt fine. But it wasn't fine. I just climbed out of the hole. I had just plateaued. Things were not good. They just weren't the worst they'd ever been. And it was all me. It was all in my head. It feels really weird saying that because we want to say, oh, it's not just in your head. Like this is a real problem, but it is a problem in your head. And it gets changed in your head. When the problem is inside of you, you have to change inside of you. You have to conquer it inside of you, not outside of you. And that's what I tried for so long was controlling things outside of me. I tried decluttering and yeah, that felt good, but it didn't feel like me, it didn't feel right. It felt very vulnerable and scary to like have my kitchen clean and then not have something to do or have something to avoid doing. It felt really uncomfortable to have areas of my home in order when inside my head was not in order. It was complete chaos inside of me. And to have outside of me no longer reflect that was terrifying. That's something I never heard anyone warn me about. I never heard anyone talk about that. So I'm saying it. If that's happened to you, if you're wondering why like, cleaning your house isn't working to control 
inside you to clean up inside of you it's just because if it's inside it has to be cared for inside it has to be cleaned up inside I mean it seems obvious now but at the time it didn't because they say like you know if you want to change your life change your space and yes but also no it can't be just your space it's got to be a combination of the two Right, because your outside world is a reflection of your inside world. And your inside is affected by your outside. But there's such a, a combination and a marriage between the inside and the outside that has to happen in order for you to really actually heal from what you're dealing with, change your life patterns, your daily patterns, and experience a new way of living. But it can absolutely be done. And I just wanted to bring attention to that during suicide awareness, don't kill yourself month. Um, and I will talk about this a few more times. Um, I'm open to questions. If you want to know, I'm open to talk about things. I just avoided making the conversation uncomfortable for a really long time. And I have to apologize for that. I have made this topic so surface when it really goes so deep. You know, when I talk about gratitude changing your life, I mean gratitude saved my life. In a time when I could only focus on what I didn't have, starting to focus on everything I did have, starting to see blessings in my everyday life, it changed my brain patterns. It changed the way I see things. It changed the way I see myself. It gave me a power I didn't have before, where before I felt so powerless. I felt like everything was beyond my control I felt like I was not enough. I did not do enough. Those feelings of shame and guilt were running my life. The negative thoughts that told me I wasn't enough were so loud in my brain. And it was in the simple practices of intention, gratitude, and affirmation that I overcame the voices of inferiority, the just the things that kept running through my brain that were telling me I was a terrible wife because I didn't have a perfect dinner cooked. Telling me I was a bad mom because I had to dig through a laundry basket full of clothes to find underwear for my kid. And these things are silly. Because it was such black and white thinking and it was such a spiral kind of thought process I had. And I had to really end up reframing the way I viewed all these things and realizing being a mom has nothing to do with laundry. Being a wife has nothing to do with cooking dinner. When I said my vows on my wedding day, not one of them included cooking dinner. Not one of them put the responsibility of dinner on me. I never promised that. What I did agree to was, can I quit my job? And in return, I will pack your lunch and make dinner and make sure dinner is done. Not that I would make dinner. Make sure dinner is done. Um, that was a totally separate agreement that had nothing to do with being a wife. That had to do with if I'm staying home, I will take over more of the home care tasks. But to say I was a crappy wife because I wasn't cooking a good enough dinner those were the thoughts in my head that didn't need to be there. Those were not helpful. And they were not true. Hi, baby. Hi. I'm recording something right now. Can you turn your sound off? Okay. Shh. And doing laundry has nothing to do with being a mom. Okay? Because guess what? I did laundry before I was a mom. Hi. Do laundry and motherhood only has to do in common is because now you're multitasking when you do laundry. Now you're doing laundry for more people. 
But that's got nothing to do with being a mom. Because if you paid someone else to do all your laundry for you, it wouldn't mean you're a bad mom. It wouldn't mean you're less of a mom. If one of your kids takes over doing laundry, that doesn't make them the mom, does it? If everyone in the house was responsible for their own laundry, that wouldn't make them their own mother. You see what I mean? We can't say that we're bad at something because we forgot to do a task that isn't actually related to that at all. That's not a mom task to do laundry. It's not a causation, it's a correlation. A lot of moms are in charge of the laundry in their home. And that's why I will talk about laundry systems for moms. But there's a lot of moms that don't do laundry. They're not less of a mom for not doing laundry. You're not less of a mom for not doing the laundry. You get what I mean? It makes you maybe bad at doing laundry. You might be a person who is not good at doing laundry. Doesn't make you a bad mom. It makes you bad at laundry. Very different. You can be bad at laundry. That's fine. There's no guilt in being bad at laundry. It's dangerous when you think you're a bad mom because you're bad at laundry. Those were the kinds of thoughts I was living with every day on repeat. You're a bad wife, you're a bad mom. You're a bad wife, you're a bad mom. Every little thing I couldn't get to, get to I couldn't get it done. Every thing on my to-do list that was not complete was just screaming at me, you're a bad mom, you're a bad wife. You shouldn't be alive. Yep, you drink some. You can finish it, go ahead. That's why I teach what I teach. That's... That's why I'm so passionate about sharing everyday joy and how to be a happy mom. Because it saved me from ending my life. These were the tools that that day in the woods when I decided not to end my life because I saw the dead Stellar's Jay. Because I had that realization that I had everything I needed already. I knew what to do. I just had to do it. These are the tools. These are the things I knew what to do. I just wasn't doing created into an easy to use product that helps you helps me i use them all the time i refer back to the happy mom brain all the time i use the everyday joy planner every day not every day i skip some days but it's the planner that i use i am constantly seeing it i'm constantly being reminded gratitude affirmations intention what are you doing with your day three priorities minimum maximum don't do more than three things well don't don't take responsibility for more than three things in a day. Don't plan to do more than three. That's that's the key ticket. Um, three things beyond what you normally do. Three new things. That's what it is. Um, because you can have rhythms in place. You do things that you don't need to put on your to-do list every day. Um, but that's just, it's how I keep my brain organized. It's how I know what's coming up next. Using that planner, referring to tools in the happy mom brain is how I keep my brain happy. It's how I keep myself from believing the lies that told me I wasn't enough, that I would never be enough, that I should just quit. And I have made the conversation such a surface story and not really told you how big of a deal it is to infuse your life with joy and to let things be easy. Because I made everything more complicated than it had to be and I set myself up to fail. I was never gonna accomplish everything I set out to accomplish because I was filling entire pages. I was, I was giving myself full, full page to-do lists and expecting it to get done in a day, okay? That full page to-do list, this is just things to do in the next week. And a lot of them are very small very small things. Some of them are just send an email asking a question. I don't have huge projects on here. Buy a ticket to a conference. It's easy to do. And I don't allow myself to feel guilt over not having things done. And here's what's really neat. One, one little hack. I use a highlighter to highlight what I did. So I can feel good about what I've done and I can focus on, hey, look at the things I did. That's bright colored, that's beautiful. I did these things, that's exciting. 
instead of looking at what isn't done. You know? Because when you cross out what you did, it's like, oh, what I did wasn't enough. It was bad. What I did was enough. It's bright orange. Let's draw attention to what I already did. Good job. That was beside the point. I think I distracted myself. Here I am still like distracting myself from telling you what I came here to tell you is how deep it is. I understand the pain of wanting to end your life and I understand the guilt. The guilt it feels when you want to leave your kids. I understand that because I've been there. And I'm telling you, when I talk about becoming happy, I'm not always telling you how to climb a mountain. I'm telling you how to climb out of your hole. And then you work towards the mountain. I climbed out of a hole. <laughs> and I got to share my ladder. All right? I'm extending my ladder to you. And if you're not in a hole... What's that ladder going to do? The affirmations, the gratitude, the grounding, intentionality, all of these tools that I use and talk about. If you're not climbing out of a hole, you can still use that ladder to help you climb the mountain, you know? And it's the same tools. You go through it once to climb out of the hole and then you go through it again to start climbing the mountain. And then you turn back and help whoever's behind you because now you know so many things you didn't know before. And it's things that maybe you've heard. Be grateful. Practice gratitude every day. But it's in a new way that helps you ground in it and understand it and become familiar with it and to like just infuse it into how you think in the future. It's changing your thought patterns instead of just saying, be grateful. I'm here to show you how to actually feel gratitude when you've numbed that out for so long because you were afraid of feeling the fear of losing things that were important to you and meaningful to you. So you built that wall and just decided not to feel about the things at all. Right? I've been there. Yeah. I'm just opening up a conversation here, I guess. Chat with me in the comments. Send me a DM. Let me know what you need me to do to continue this conversation. Uh, I'm here. <laughs>